Well, we're starting a new series this morning. And here's the thing. We, we're going to start this part of the series. Well, I'm excuse me. We're going to start this new series. But I don't, I thought I was completely done with purpose. But the Lord said, just go back to it a little bit later. Amen. So we're going to go back to purpose. But right now, the Lord wants us to focus on this. Okay. So this series is called As You Go. Somebody say, As You Go. Now, I'm not going to talk about our foundational scripture, but if you want to know what the foundational scripture for for this series is, we'll get into it a little bit later. It's Mark 16 and 15 in the Passion Translation. Amen. Praise God. But let's start today. Again, this is just the introduction to this series. I'm going to tell you the Lord really was dealing with me the past. Well, I'd say the past two, three, four, five, six years about this. But this is the first time I've actually formulated it in a message. It, it's been the way that I personally live my life. So I'm not standing up here talking to you about something that I don't have great conviction about or have not seen actually working in my life. Amen. Amen. Y'all in this place? You know, I, I don't like to hear from a man or a woman to try to tell me or invite me to to live in a place that they don't inhabit themselves. Amen? Like, like, like a lot of people can preach and you can come up with a bunch of good messages. Trust me, I can come up with a bunch of stuff. But don't tell me to come live where you ain't never even been or you visited once or twice and you don't live there. How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, this is a great neighborhood, but you, you, don't, you don't live there. What you mean it's a great neighborhood? You got to wake up every morning and see what them neighbors is like. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to know what the association is like in order to say it's a good neighborhood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so if we're, we're standing up here on this pulpit, you have got to be speaking from a place of conviction, a place of revelation, and you got to live there if you're inviting people to come on in with you. Amen? I said amen. amen. Praise God. Can we, before we get started, can we give God praise for what happened last week? Man. absolutely amazing how many people came down and gave their lives to Christ. Now, here's the thing before we get started again. Obviously, all of the individuals that were here last week are not here today. However, those people came here because you invited them. Amen. So what I want you to do is I want, you know, obviously, just because they were here last week, don't mean they're going to be here this week. But what I want you to do is use that same vigor, that same excitement, that same convi conviction and invite these people every single week to be a part of this ministry. Amen. 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 Praise God. Give yourselves a hand for how you had this place packed out. Amen. And it was a combination of you inviting them, but also our intentional acts of love throughout the week. Did you guys have a good time? Raise your hand if, if you were looking to change someone else's life, but your life was changing the process. Just wave at me. Just wave at me. Okay, praise God. Well, the thing about that intentional acts of kindness and intentional acts of love that we did, the reality is, is that's how we should live our lives every single day. Amen? And that is what this message, this series is about. It's for us to understand that as we go in life and as we lead our normal everyday life and our walks of life and different walks of life, we're to show people the love of God and that you are a living epistle, amen, for all men to read. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 10. 1 Peter 2 and 10. I'm going to read 1 Peter 2 and 10, and then we'll later on go ahead and read 1 Peter 2 and 9. But let's start with 2 and 10 in the Passion Translation. It says, for at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. Raise your hand if anybody in here is God's people. Come on, wave at me. I'm God's people. Feel like Kirk Franklin, God's property. Amen. <laughs> Put your hands together. <laughs> ah, If you're God's property, come on, say, yep. Let me help. Let me show you how to say it. Okay. Not just yep. You gotta go yep, like a like a y u r r r r p. Yep. Okay. Praise God. For at one time you were not God's people, but now you are. 
At one time, you knew nothing about God's mercy because you hadn't received it yet. But now you are drenched in it. See, that was last week. That was the, the, the point of giving my testimony is because I wanted to let you know that I wasn't always saved. You heard my testimony just a little bit, but I had to let you know that, man, I come from, you know, some some, you know, rough beginnings, not just, you know, financially or where I grew up, but just what was going on on the inside of me and in my mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But. I didn't know nothing. And even what I did know about God, I thought I knew about God. I found out that his love was even greater than that. And the beautiful thing is, is every day I wake up, I find out another level of how much he loves me. Oh, my God. His love is continually, gradually extending and growing. Every time I think I get an understanding of how much God loves me, he shows another side of himself. Isn't he so good? You didn't know about God. You weren't God's people, but now you are. Second Corinthians five and 14. Let's read that in the message Bible. It says Christ's love has moved me to such extremes. His love has the first and last word in everything we do. Let's read that again. Christ's love, his love, has moved me to such an extreme that his love has the first and the last in everything I do. So no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going, the love of God and it manifesting in your life as you do what you do, it should be prevalent and unmistakable. Somebody say amen to that. Say this. Say Christ's love has moved me, overwhelmed me, overcome me, engulfed me, set me on fire to such an extreme that his love has the first and last say in everything I do. Now give him a hand clap for that. So because of that, the next verse, it says, so our firm decision, because his love has the first and last word in everything I do, I've made a firm decision. In other words, it's firm because guess what? I ain't coming up off this thing. It's a firm decision is to work. Somebody say it takes work. Somebody say love takes work. To work from this focused center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. Everybody is in the same boat. Look around the room. What I love about our ministry, we got all types of different people in here, but the reality is no matter where you from, what you look like, what country you came from, amen, what background you came from, whether you was rich, poor, on this side of the track, on the other side of the track, whether you white, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Haitian, Republican, Democrat, whatever, we're all in the same boat. Give somebody a dap and tell them, tell them, say, we in the same boat. Tell them, say, we in the same boat. <laughs> you know, I find out, and you're looking at all these sneakers over here, like, what is all these sneakers up here? I find out, and again, it's not an exact science, but I love shoes, as y'all probably already know, right? So what I find out is you could tell a lot about, well, not a lot, but at least a little bit about a person based on the type of shoes they wear. And nowadays, I don't know if you understand this, some of you may not get this in this generation, it's very important to young people and people in general, just not young people, just people. If you're alive in this generation, I don't care if you're a baby boomer. I don't care if you're a generation X. I don't care if you're a, a millennial, generation Z. There's one thing that people do, at least guys, all the guys in here. Dang, now y'all slow. We getting, we, we, we getting bad on that. You know what I'm saying? I just want to pop it on you real quick, see if y'all get, where all the men at? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, they knew guys. That's what it is, Carl. That's what's wrong. Okay. So when we say we're all the men, here's the answer. Here's the response. Arr! 
Where are all the men at? Okay. Let me see, ladies. You had a couple of times. Where are all the ladies at? Okay, okay, okay. One thing that guys do, and I'm not really sure why we do this, but it's because we're trying to kind of figure out what type of individual you are when you walk by us. When guys walk by each other, they don't do it right away, but the next thing they do is. Like, why? Why do we do that? Because for some reason, you can kind of, maybe, I'm not saying this is an exact science, but you can kind of tell what type of individual they are by the shoes they wear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All my flip-flop people, let me hear <laughs> don't try, don't, don't try to act like you ain't. You can say whatever you want, but there's some flip-flop people up in here. If you was a flippity-floppity person, holler at me real quick. Okay, see, some of you are like, yes, I wear flip-flops. I do. Goody? Okay, praise God. All right, praise the Lord. Okay, don't you, don't you act like... <laughs> <laughs> on my high heel ladies where you at For praise God see now some ladies like I'm not wearing no heels all my ladies that wear flats where you at okay all my high end Gucci and Louis Vuitton people where you at some of y'all like, Ooh, I'm working on it <laughs> increase increase <laughs> It's me, but my budget doesn't say. <laughs> Thank you. I'm on the way, Jesus. <laughs> as you go, as my say, as you. <laughs> well, my Air Force people, Air Force One. Keep your stuff in your yeah, Air Force One. Keep people like yeah, yeah. My Jays, people that like Jays, where you at? Okay. You can tell a lot about a person from the type of shoes they wear. Amen? You, your brother got on sketches. I'm not saying anything wrong with sketches, but you know what type of individual that is. He's not really concerned. I'm not saying he's not a multimillionaire. I'm just saying you can tell that person could care less about what's on his feet. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you're able to go, you know what? Well, okay, I, I, okay, I see where you at, at least, my brother. Now, I'm not wearing no sketches. Personally, it's my personal decision. But there's nothing wrong with a person that wants to wear sketches. And then there's these people that just are confused about what Jordans are. And then they want to wear LeBrons. Just want to make sure we understand. LeBrons are LeBrons. They're not Jordans. <laughs> okay. Anybody watch basketball? Okay, all right. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to move on. But you can tell a lot about a person if they're wearing LeBrons. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and, and I won't say a lot. And again, it's not an exact science, but you can tell a little bit about that individual. You can tell what sphere of influence they come from. If you get an older guy and the older guy, he's, you know, above 45 years old and you see him wearing J's, you understand what I'm saying? Old dude, he got all, uh, everything is great and he got on Jordans. First thing you go is, all right. <laughs> come on now. You're going to come from the other side of the room to go over and say, okay, pops, I see you. Why? Because he's older, but it's obvious pops know what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? And so you could tell a little about, does anybody know what I'm talking about? You could tell a little bit about the sphere of influence that this person comes from or the sphere that influences them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But the reality is, no matter what sphere of influence you come from, whether you like Jays, Jordan, High Heel, Red Bottom, LeBron's, uh, uh, Trainers, whether you, you, know, you wear Air Max, whether you wear Yeezys, whether you wear these big old boots, you know, no, ma no matter what you wear, the reality is, guess what? We're all in the same boat. The same boat. And we've got to be careful, like what it says here in, the, in, in Corinthians. Let's go down to the 
the next verse. It says, because of this decision, watch now, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. No matter what sphere of influence you come from, you still have a responsibility, listen, to share the good news of the gospel with everyone you come in contact with. Amen. So maybe you wear J's and you like to play basketball. Well, then guess what you need to do? Play basketball and tell people about Jesus. Come on. Maybe you are a, you know, construction worker and you wear construction boots. Well, you got on your construction boots, you're doing the work in construction, but guess what? While you on a job, tell people about the goodness of Jesus. Maybe you're wearing your high heels and you work in an office. It don't matter what it is, wherever you go, you are to be a living epistle with your red bottoms on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at the person next to you again and tell them, say, we are all in the same boat. And tell them, by the way, I like your shoes. I like your shoes. <laughs> because of this decision, what decision? Because we understand our firm decision is to work from this focus center. We're going back to the 15th verse now. The third, well, the, the end of the 14th verse. One man died for everyone that puts everyone in the same boat, which means the 15th verse is that he included everyone into his death. So that everyone, somebody say everyone. Everyone could also be included in his life. John 3.16 says what? For God so loved the... Who does God love? Does God love people that wear J's? Does God love people that wear high heels? Do God love people that wear the knee highs? So be careful when you see somebody with the big old knee high boots on and the first thing you do is go to judging them. Oh, watch out, ladies. Come on, ladies. You know good and well. You see somebody strutting with them thigh highs on, the first thing you're going to be like, it. where's she going with them dang thigh highs on? Can we tell the truth today? Can we tell the truth today? It's the middle of the day. She got on thigh highs. You like. <laughs> Same boat. Mmm. Everyone could be included in this life. A resurrection life. Yes, you may be looking at them thinking that they need a far better life. Well, that's what the word of God says. It says it right here. The resurrection life is a far better life than, the, than they have lived on their own. That's the whole key. That's what we're inviting them in. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. Listen, we looked at the Messiah that way once, and we got it all wrong. As you know, we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, created new. The old life is gone, and the new life begins. That's a good place to give him some praise right there. So no matter what sphere you come from, no matter what you got on your feet, the reality is, guess what? Every single person deserves an encounter with your daddy. Amen. Raise your hand if God is your father. Amen. Raise the other one if you're a child of God. Amen. Everyone, listen, listen carefully, hear me, don't let it go over your head. We trek in some place, amen. This series is going to be real good. It's going to mess with all your theology. It's going to loosen you up a little bit again. This is the introduction. Everyone deserves an encounter with God. Now you say it. Say, everyone deserves an encounter with God. Say it one more time. Say, everyone. Mm. Because, see, the thing about us is I'm just being really honest. When we say everyone, we mean everybody except. Because you're saying everyone, but there's that mm, 
there's a few people that you just like, I'm good, but those types of people just kind of rub me the wrong way. I'm good, but them freaking crazy Democrats. I'm good, but them right-wing Republicans, they just, as soon as they go to talking, it just does something to me. I feel the come up my back, and I just feel like hurting somebody. I don't cuss, but I be just, come on, come on. You know what really gets me? Homosexual. Did I step on your toes yet? What is their freaking problem? (laughs) You know what really drives me crazy? White people. They just, mm, when I'm in their presence, it just irks me. I'm good, but them Haitians, uh uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm good. Mm-mm. I'll tell you right now. Jamaicans? Oh my God. What is it? They got a gun everywhere they go? What is it? Booyaka, booyaka. What is it? What is with these Cubans? think they run the world, at least in South Florida. Learn English. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm Cuban, but Mexican? I'm Dominican, but Puerto Ricans, we don't call me Puerto Rican. I'm not a Puerto Rican. I am from Dominican. I'm from the DR. Me and them, we don't know. (sighs) Somebody say, same boat. Say, help us, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and just write this. Father, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us, help us. See, it's okay to have a preference, but I'm not sure it's okay to be prejudiced. It's okay to be, pre- no, no, no. It's okay to have a preference. But if we are children of God, we can't be prejudiced. And being prejudiced don't mean you white or you black or you, no, no. You can be prejudiced against People that look just like you. Give somebody a high five. Because see, the person next to you, you think they like you, but you might find they ain't nothing like you. Give somebody next to you a high five and say, same bow. Glory to God. Now give yourselves a hand clap. Now give God an even bigger hand clap. Now we look inside and we see that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start and is created new. Say, thank you, Lord, that I'm created new. Say it again. Say, thank you, Lord, that I'm created new. Well, if you have a revelation that you've been created new, you are what it says in 1 Peter 2 and 9. That you are a chosen treasure. Say, I'm a chosen treasure. Let's read this in the Passion Translation. It says, you are God's chosen treasure. In other words, uh, I did a study on this. When he says chosen treasure, it was like you are the cornerstone. You've been set apart and chosen specifically to do an extremely important job for God. In other words, you're the apple of his eye. Amen. Say, I'm God's, the apple of God's eye. First Peter 2 and 9 says this, you are God's treasure. Priests who are kings or kings who are priests or a priesthood of kings 
or a kingdom of priests. Did you catch that? Either you are a priesthood called to minister and do the work of God, but you are a king or a queen. Or you are a nation, a kingdom, and where everyone in the kingdom is a priest. Somebody say, I'm chosen by God. My goodness. He called you out of darkness. Anyone been called out of darkness? Yes, I'm taking my time and walking through this thing. You got to get a revelation because guess what? I'm telling you right now, there was a word that was given to me the other day. God is about to blow our ministry up like crazy. It's about to be insane. We ain't going to have no way to put the people, but it's going to come through you. Raise your hand if you've been called out of darkness. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. Listen, now. he did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Your job is to broadcast God's glorious wonders. Anyone experience God's glorious wonders? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Just 10 of y'all? Anybody experience God's glorious wonders? Now, it's our job to broadcast that throughout the entire world. So now we get to our foundational scripture here. Mark 16 and 15. Now, we won't go into too much, but we're going to let you know, kind of set the setting here where this passage of scripture comes from. We had we just uh, 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 celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And so Resurrection Sunday, we know that Jesus lived. He died. And on the third day, he rose again. Amen. So on the third day, Jesus rises again. And the first thing he does is he rises again and he sees Mary, he talks to Mary. And then he goes to the disciples who are cowering, cowering, scared. Locked up in a room someplace because they have no revelation of what Jesus had been telling them the whole three years they were together. Jesus shows up to them and he says this. Mark 16 and 15, Passion Translation. And he said to them, listen, as you go, as you go into the world, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. Is there anyone who is not anyone <laughs> that is not a part of the human race? Do I don't I don't think it's no aliens. Anybody in here alien? <laughs> Raise your hand if you are alien. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a part of the human race. How many understand when the word of God says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He talking about the whole entire world. Remember that commercial when we was growing up? A-L-L? Who remember that? All? Y'all know? Dang. No one remembers? Hope I'm not that. Lord, I thank you for. You're renewing my youth like the eagle. <laughs> there was a commercial, and the, and the little girl would be like, A-L-L? That spells all, right? She's talking about the, all, the you know, the all, detergent, right? <laughs> oh, somebody said, oh, yeah, I think I was one. <laughs> You're old. <laughs> Listen, when Jesus died, he died for all of us, the whole entire world. Everybody. Come on, you say everybody. My goodness. We're to, <laughs> to preach openly, to be the broadcasters, like it says in First Peter, right? Of God's wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. What is the gospel? The gospel simply means the good news. What's the good news to the people with the thigh highs on? You ain't got to keep wearing them thigh highs no more. <laughs> Chafing and all that is happening. You don't have to wear them. <laughs> God is about to set you free. 
Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, my pastor crazy. <laughs> you are a living epistle, and you're to be read by all men. But the reality is this. It's more than likely there's, your sphere of influence is only so big. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I think we've been so confused and we've made the mistake of thinking that I'm not saying that God may not call you to outer Mongolia or to, you know, to a third world country. But I think the reason why we have such an issue with just telling people about the good news of the gospel is we're always moving and shaking. Not realizing that God is giving you opportunities to tell people about Jesus as you go. Just as you go. It's just that simple. Let's get away from all the religion and tradition. When we start talking about ministering and evangelizing people, the first thing we think of, we got to have a street ministry. Not, not that you shouldn't, because the Lord may call you to a street ministry. But if we were really think about this, the way that God had ordained it, the way Jesus did it, the way Jesus did evangelism, it was just as he went. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Raise your hand if you got a job and you got to go there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ray, come on. Come on. Let's talk. Let's be. Raise your hand if you got a job. Wouldn't it be nice if you could quit your job and just minister to people for the rest of your life and never have to work again? That would be wonderful. But raise your hand if you got to go to work. As you go to work. Raise your hand if it would be great if you woke up in the morning, ladies, most likely, because men, you probably don't do this much. But wouldn't it be wonderful if you woke up in the morning and you just ran out of milk and you could just open the refrigerator and the milk just pop up in there? Come on now. Like the Jetsons. Tell me, don't tell me you don't know the Jetsons. The Jetsons grabbed the refrigerator. <laughs> We're out of milk. They close the refrigerator back. The milk be there. Right? But how many know you got to go to the grocery store to get the milk? So as you go to the grocery store, look for opportunities to tell people about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Come on, come on, come on. How many people like to go out to eat. Now, no, 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 no. <laughs> Please tell the truth and shame the devil. How many people like to go out to eat? More people than that. <laughs> it would be great if we didn't have to go get food, right? I know it would be good for me <laughs> if I could just be sustained without... <laughs> Without spending money in eating good food, I'll just, just wake up and my belly is full, amen. I probably could lose more weight, amen. <laughs> but we like to go out, have fun, enjoy ourselves, see the good scenery. We like to talk and communicate with one another in our culture. That's what we do. Hey, man, let's go hang out. We're going to go out and have a good meal. We're going to sit down, enjoy each other, have fun, communicate with one another. But guess what? The, while we're doing that, as you go... To dinner with your homeboys and your homegirls or your wife and your family, God is going to give you opportunities to do what? Somebody say, as you go. The majority of your opportunities to tell people the night and day difference that God made in your life is going to be as you go. As you do normal, everyday life. I learned this from my father. We would go, see, I'm, I'm a little bit different. You know, when I was growing up, from church to church, and then outside of church, man. I said me, this is how I grew up. I go to church, but you liable to get, you know, the left hand of fellowship. You might... <laughs> You might get me, you know what I mean? You might get the screw face. I may know what the screw face look like. What are you looking at? 
But I begin to realize as I watch my father, everywhere this man went, he was looking for opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. We out to dinner, he'd be like, hey, 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 hey now. Like, why are he leaning forward like that? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, hey, you know what? I'm like, wow, that's cool. We go to the car show. He'd be, hey, 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 what's up? Hey, look at my car. Look at my car. Hey, you know what now? I'd be like, man, we at the car show. Let's just sit back and let these people sweat the vehicle. I don't want to talk about no Jesus. Giving people his phone number, folks calling him. I'm like, what the dude? You don't know this dude. You don't want to hang out with this dude. I don't know, Dad. I'd be telling him, I don't know, man. I don't know about that dude there. I don't know. He'd be like, son, son. These people need Jesus. And you can't be worried about if they got on sketches. Amen. <laughs> if they flip-flop people. Come on. If they high heel people. You know what you wear. Don't matter what they wear. The reality is, guess what? We're all in the same boat. What you learned last week as you reached out with intentional acts of love, you begin to find out that the word, oh my God, this is good. The word of the Lord is nigh you. It's in your own mouth. The word of deliverance is in your mouth. Oh, yeah. The word for deliverance from depression. The word uh, 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 for, for healing to their marriage. It's in your mouth. The word for, 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 for families to get back together, the relationship between son and father and, and daughter and mother is in your mouth. It's right here. Mm, my God, my God, my God, my God. Where are we going to go from here? What time is it? Oh, we got we doing good. Somebody say, Pastor, you're doing good. Got a lot of time left. Praise God. Uh, hey, y'all, it's funny because I was doing this as you go thing and I was typing it in and I just wanted to see, you know, I always do word searches and just kind of mess around with stuff and kind of see if I could find some like, you know, backgrounds and stuff like that for the sermon message. And I typed in as you go. How many, how many have heard those commercials for as you go cellular service? Come on, tell, you ain't never heard that? Pay as you go. Oh, okay. Boost mobiles. Come on now. As you go. But you know what's amazing? Watch this now. What if somebody gave you an as you go phone, but you ain't never had to go back and pay for it? In other words, what if the phone was paid for? So you could just go and never worry about having to go back and pay for it. Them cell phone bills ain't nothing to play with. How many would like to cut your cell phone bill in half? Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So what if somebody paid that bad boy in full? You ain't even had to pay for it. All you just had to do was get on that bad boy and just talk. <laughs> People start clapping. Thank you. That's, that'll preach. But see, that's how you got to look at your life, right? When Jesus died on the cross, he paid it in blood. Listen, listen, listen. Paid in full. So guess what? Now, all you got to do is go and tell someone. Communicate to somebody else that he paid the price for you, you'd be telling everybody, man, I know this thing, this service that'll pay your cell phone bill. Man, all you got to do is sign up. You go to good restaurants and tell people about it. But he's changed your life forever. Set you apart, called you holy, 
showed his extravagant love for you and has changed your whole life. Where would you be if it had not been for the goodness of God on your side? Set you free, changed your, saved your marriage, saved your life, healed your body, saved your kid. Paid in full. And all you got to do is tell someone. You don't have to have a ministry to, to South Africa. You don't have to sell all your own and go, you know, into missionary work. Just as you go, tell somebody about Jesus. Come on, give God a hand. Come on. Galatians 3 and 13, Passion Translation. It says, yet Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed it completely and he became a curse in our place. For it's written, everyone who hung upon a tree is doubly cursed. Jesus, our Messiah, was cursed in our place. And in doing so, he dissolved the curse from our lives so that all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon even non-Jewish believers. And now God gives us the promise of the wonderful Holy Spirit who lives within us when we believe in him. In other words, we're God's chosen people, amen? But there's some other people who don't look like you, who don't act like you, who don't go to the same church you go to, they have an opportunity to be encountered by the goodness of God. Watch this. Through you. Because the price was already paid for you. Oh, my God. 1 Corinthians 7 and 23. Passion Translation. Since a great price was paid for your redemption, stop having the mindset of a slave. Brothers and sisters, you must remain in close communion with God. No matter, what our, no matter what our situation was when we first met him, our job is to stay in communication with the Father. You know, as you go, if you do this, right, as you go and as you're just living life, doing life, and we're going to talk about this, what that looks like in the next coming Sundays and series, is, but if you have a revelation and you stay in communion with God, I'm going to give you a quick testimony. God will interrupt your as you going to let you know that young lady right in front of you, that man right in front of you, I want him for the kingdom. And you'll begin to feel the compassion of God for the individual as you're in communion with the Father. And as you begin to feel the compassion of God for this person, guess what? He'll put the words in your mouth. Oh, He'll tell you what to say. He'll tell you what to ask. And as you do so, all of a sudden, man, the power of God will flow through you, hit them. And before you know it, they crying, boo-hoo crying. And here you are, given an opportunity to lead them to the same lover of your soul, the lifter of your head. Introduce them to your daddy. Come on now. Oftentimes, well, as a matter of fact, the other week, me and my wife were out. And we were spending time together and just having a good time. Listen, I was not thinking about evangelizing. I'm thinking about eating this sushi on my plate. Look at somebody and say, God wants you to have a good time. Come on, man. Look at the person on the other side and say, God wants you to have a good time. What's the sense of living life and then calling it abundant life, but you will never have no good time? That makes no sense. Every time you out doing something, you just got to, holy ghost, holy ghost. <laughs> yes, I'll have the salad, please. Do you got holy ghost dressing? Oh, I can't eat that. I don't think God will be pleased. Come on now. <laughs> Sourpuss Christian days is over with. 
I said, Sour Puss Christian Days is over with. You ain't going to be able to minister to nobody. You're going to be saved. And when you get there, Jesus is going to be like, can I ask you a question? All them people, why you in? Hair time people, why you ain't got no friends? Well, Lord. Well, Jesus. (laughs) I'm not sure who you're talking to, but I'm always in the spirit, Jesus. Okay. Come on now. I'm not talking about you, but you know somebody just like that. Just always. What's, what's wrong with this lady? What's wrong with that man? God wants me to live an abundant life. A life full of joy. A life full of fun. Listen, a life full of life, laughter. Watch this. And music. Somebody go like this. Somebody go like this. Come on, just go like this. Go like this. I'm, I'm, we going we to get into this for real. Not today, but we're going to get into it. But it's going to change your mind. It's going to change your mind. Somebody say, as you go. Everywhere you go. Hey, you in the gym. Listen, you didn't go to the gym <laughs> to evangelize. You went to work out. But while you're working out, communion with the father he just might give you an opportunity to tell somebody about the goodness of God look see everybody has specific places that they like to do specific things when I'm in the gym don't talk to me I'm just being honest with you I go there I don't want to talk to nobody I'll be like Lord I don't I really I love everybody but Lord I don't want to talk to nobody please Jesus I just want to work out But every time I'm there, somehow he causes me to be in contact with somebody who needs to hear about him. You know, it's cold, you know, COVID stuff and stuff like that. I'm in, I'm working out on a little elliptical bike. Lady come upstairs, older lady, she comes upstairs, sit right next to me. I'm like, there's five bikes down there. Why are you sitting right here? Can I tell the truth and shame the devil? She ain't got on no mask. This was during the height. You understand what I'm saying? Sat right there. I'm like, come on, lady. Wait now. All of a sudden, I got a check in my spirit. Holy Spirit said, oh, really? That's how we do? All of a sudden, the lady is sitting there, and she's trying to ride her bike, and her leg would not move. And the Holy Spirit said, look at you. This inconvenienced you, did it? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) someone sitting next to you. (laughs) What are you going to do now? It's over. (laughs) The Holy Spirit said, you're going to let this lady, lady, you're going to let this lady leave here like that? Oh, absolutely not. Ma'am, can I pray for you? What's going on with your leg? I just had surgery, can't move it, and I just felt, watch this now, I just felt like I was supposed to come here and sit on this bike and maybe I would get some mobility out of it. Now, to me, now, now all of a sudden now, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. (laughs) I'm like, you about to get this work. (laughs) Father, in the name of Jesus, we command this lady. All of a sudden, the lady started rolling on the bike. She like, what? She like, older Haitian lady. She like, where are you from? Oh, my God. God, how you do this? I said, it's, I, I said, baby, I didn't do it. It was God. Watch this. Sweaty, nasty, in the gym. And God gave me an opportunity. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, she may never come to my church. I invited her, but she may never come here. But 
I was a living epistle that day and allowed the power of God to flow through me to this individual. And how do, I don't know whatever happened to her, but it could have changed her life forever. Somebody shout glory. That's our job. The price been paid for me. Huh? I need to let somebody else know. Guess what? He can pay the price for you too. My God. How many are thankful that you're healthy in your body? Come on. But guess what? Everybody ain't, ain't like that. But the price has been paid for you, and you're decreeing full healing over your body, and you're living in the blessing of God. And so you know it's because of the blood, the shed blood of the Lamb, that by His stripes, you are healed in Jesus' name. So because you have that revelation and you know what, what price was paid for you to live in that reality, guess what? You should be able to pay it forward for somebody else. You better give God praise. You better act like you know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. First Peter 1 and 13, Message Bible, says it like this. So roll up your sleeves, it says. Put your mind in gear. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming from Jesus. Don't lazily slip back into the old grooves of evil doing what just you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then, but now you do. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. A life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy. You be holy. What, what, what does that holy mean? The word holy means set apart. Just like we read in 1 Peter. You've been chosen. Set apart. Amen. You're a priesthood of kings. A kingdom of priests. You've been chosen for what? To do the work of God. To tell people about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You, you called out to God for help. And he helped you. He's a good father that way. But don't forget, he is an also a responsible father and won't let you get by with sloppy living. Look at somebody and say, no more sloppy living. Look at somebody else and say, no more sloppy living. Say, we got work to do. Time to be about our father's business. Glory to God. We're going to finish with this, these, this passages of scripture, not one, but a few others. And we're going to be done. Amen. Romans 10 and 8. Message Bible. Ah, I said it earlier. The word that saves. Saves lives. The word that saves marriages. The word that saves people from committing suicide. The word that saves relationships, depressions. Saves people from heartache. Saves people from sickness in their body is right here as near as the tongue in your mouth as close as the heart in your chest jesus Whew. the word of faith that welcomes god to do work and set things right for us this is the core of our preaching this is the message bible say the welcoming word to god jesus is my master embracing body and soul god's work of doing in us what he did in raising Jesus from the dead. That's it. You're not doing anything. You're simply calling out to God, trusting him to do it for you. That's salvation. With your whole being, you embrace God setting things right, and then you say it out loud. God has set everything right <laughs> between him and me. The scripture reassures us. No one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. It's exactly the same no matter what a person's religious background. It's exactly the same for everyone no matter what side of the road they were born on. It's the exact same no matter what uh, a political dispensation they're a part of. It's exactly the same no matter what denomination they come from. It's exactly the same if they're a different color than you. It's the same. My God. The same God for all of us. 
acting the same incredible generous way to everyone who calls out for help. Everyone who calls, help God, gets help. Listen, listen. But how can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if no one tells them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? And in the, the uh, New Living Translation, it says it like this, same passage of Scripture. It says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him? Unless someone tells them. And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture says, listen, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. How beautiful are the feet. Maybe you got on jeans. Maybe you got on red bottom. Maybe you're wearing your Gucci's to do it, amen? No matter what you got on, you could even have on some flip-flops, praise God. But the way that God sees this, that your feet are beautiful if you are bringing the message of the gospel to those that need it. How? How? As you go. Amen? Please give God a hand clap for that. Come on, let's stand to our feet. It's a new way of thinking. God is changing our mindsets. Amen. As I said before, that sourpuss Christianity got to go. I'm going to be happy while I'm telling people about Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to be joking and laughing and, and, and grooving. And, and Come on now. Huh? Having a good time. And just, come on, last week, we saw that. If we loosen up a little bit, over 100 people gave their life to Christ last week in this building. Oh, we can't do that. Who said? Oh, you better not do that. Why not? Look what happened. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, begin to worship the king. Listen, begin to worship your daddy. Not the man upstairs with a white beard and a lightning bolt. That's Zeus, not God. We talking about Abba. Come on, talk to your daddy. Talk to your daddy. He's about to use you mightily. He's about to intervene in your life. See, when you get a revelation, guess what? That's when he starts giving you more and more opportunity. It's about to blow your mind. See, you didn't know the young lady that walked past you and was looking at you like that. You didn't know she saw the light of the Lord on you and she needed someone to let her know that she's loved. That's all she was looking at you for. The young man who passed your way when you was thinking he was thinking something negative. No, he just wanted to know that somebody loves me. Please tell me I'm worth more than what society says I am. As you go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for God encounters. Opportunities to show and share the love of God with everyone we come in contact with. God, I thank you that the light bulb is going on in us today. That we're realizing that no matter at what level that we see ourselves in the quote unquote totem pole of your kingdom, which really ain't one, that we understand that we can be used by you, my God. I don't got to know a bunch of scriptures. You should. But if you don't, that ain't going to keep you from telling people about the goodness of Jesus. Huh? Jeremiah told him, said, look, I want to tell a man. There was, there, oh boy, we, we ain't got time this week. But Jeremiah was a young man petrified. If he was a young man, more than likely he couldn't even read, y'all. Are, are y'all hearing me this morning? 
So you got to understand the, 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 the culture and the times that we're talking about ancient Israel. Most people couldn't even read. God tells Jeremiah, I knew you, boy. I'm calling you to be a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah said, hold up. I'm too young. God told him, say, don't say that. In other words, if you say it again, you sin it. Whatever God tell you to do and you do it, I tell you not to do and you do it anyway, it's a sin. So God said, "Uh uh-uh. If I call you something, you ain't got the right to call yourself nothing else. I know you can't read. I know you don't know where that scripture located, but I'm about to use you mightily regardless. He said, I don't know what to say. Don't be afraid of their faces. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. You serve the God of heaven and earth. He's your daddy. You think he can't tell you what to say? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm messing up all that weird stuff that we learn. We're going to Man, we're going to mess all that stuff up. Let me tell you something. Do you understand that there's a, there's a, dis, a, a dispensing of grace, a dispensation of grace that is released to you when you start telling people about Jesus? It's a whole nother level of gracing. The stuff that you're worried about and concerned about begins to fall off when you start witnessing. <laughs>